Innovation, imagination, wonder. These are just some of the words used to describe Dr. Harvey Passes. Dr. Passes explores interesting people and ideas that will stimulate you. He questions the people who develop, create, and employ novel concepts in business and everyday lives. He especially loves to speak with successful people. How did they do it? How can you do it too? So let's join Dr. Harvey Passes in his quest of wonder and curiosity as we watch Dr. Harvey Passes Presents. Recently, I was at a meeting at the Manhasset Chamber of Commerce, and it was a fascinating, highly educational, very informative uh, evening. It was a presentation given by an officer, police officer, from the 6th Precinct. And this gentleman was so knowledgeable. So, And, and he, not only that, it, his style of communication made it so easy that you just wanted to keep listening more and more. So great information and great delivery. Uh, I, I just walked away with so much information that I came home and I told my wife all about this. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about security how to secure your home, the outside, the inside, what to look for, what to do. And you're getting it right from the, don't take this wrong, the horse's mouth. I mean, who knows better than the police officer, except maybe a burglar. <laughs> but, but on the other hand, I thought that he did such a great job that I asked police officer Peter Chucho to come down here and to inform you so that you can gain the same information that I got. So without further ado, I bring to you Officer Chucho. Great to be Terrific. Here. It's great to have you here, and uh, it's great to see you again. You, you. I, I tell you, the audience that night, they were going just wild because you could hear a pin drop. Nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to uh, uh, leave because it was just so interesting. It was just terrific. Thank you. So it was really great. Let's get right down to it now because you've got a lot of ground to cover, and I know you can speak for hours on this subject. You're so knowledgeable on this. Um, I noticed that when we spoke about how we're going to discuss all of this, you broke it down to concepts, exterior, interior, and th those are the two gross topics, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so we're going to discuss all of that, and, uh, but before we get into this, tell me just a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with all this. I have a career now in Nassau County Police Department for 21 years. Right. It's been a great career. 13 of those years were spent on what's called a postcard. That's an area which is covered within the precinct. We have 24 within the 6th precinct, and it covers a local area they're predominantly protecting. Um, I spent the last eight and a half years in what's called pop problem oriented policing. Well, that's all. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So you... Um well, you know, before you were telling me before we before you sat down that you know you, you're in the field, so you you're not just going around talking and informing the community as a public outreach, but you're also policing. That's correct. You're also working and right in the right in the field. That's correct. Interesting. Pop is an organization where uh, Pop is a unit which is it's a proactive approach to policing. We have the officers in the field that are doing their job. And if they're overwhelmed or they're tied to the radio, as we know, or they have an assignment which doesn't allow them to stay a little bit longer, complete what they want to do, whether it's a youth problem, a burglary problem, something that's existing at an odd hour, it's going to come back to the uh, pop officers. Our job is basically fix it, complete it, make it go away legally, morally. You want to try to do the best you can, but you want the problem to go away. If it cannot go away, so to speak, we want to make it workable so that we can turn it back to the car post and he can function with it. We have a lot, a lot of tasks that we do within the uh, POP unit. Um, school safety, we set up their school plans. We sit down with them. Uh, terrorism plans as far as what to do, what if to do with corporations. <laughs> a lot of training, uh, homeless problems. Anything that comes up, we're kind of like the old Shell Answer Man used to be. They give it to us, and we try to deal with it and make it work as much as possible. Uh, any problems that they have over in headquarters, it comes through our inspectors. If they need somebody, they try to get a hold of us. If the postcard can't handle it, we're kind of the the overflow for anything that comes as far as a you got to clean up all the mess. You're the broom. It's an exciting <laughs> job. It's not bad. You get to be creative, different organizations, and it works well. That's interesting. Okay, let's get down to it. Um, 
Do we have many burglaries in Nassau County? Is it Nassau a, is County it, in the last four years has come down drastically. Come and down? Come down, and that's a good thing. Well, that's but very that's, good. That's because of, I, I would say for the Why? most part, number one, you've got a very proactive approach to things. It's, it's not just the pop unit, not just our CDP, our crime deterrent patrol, but the post offices have done a tremendous job. They've learned their post. They know their shop owners. They speak to people. Neighborhoods we've gone around to, and as far as having discussions like this, where you start to pick up some ideas and become a neighborhood. Remember when we grew up, everybody sat on the front porch. Oh, yeah. yeah. And everybody knew what everybody was doing. Because we have such a lifestyle now where everybody's so busy, both parents are working. A lot you don't of even know your neighbors families. many times. Exactly, that point, right. But it's come down quite a bit, so that's good. What is burglary? I mean, people, they think they know what it is, but explain it. What, what is burglary? Burglary is basically if you're going to somebody's dwelling, somebody's house, somebody's business, and you're taking and removing something without their knowledge mm -hmm. or without their okay. Mm. Even if you're breaking a window and just reaching in and stealing somebody's purse, you're not physically in the building, yet your arm is, or if you're taking a sticker pole and removing it, that's still a burglary. So when my wife says, you know, she, she knows she needs extra money and she goes into my wallet, and that, that's burglary, and I can call you. <laughs> <laughs> that's for a different unit. <laughs> I can't answer that one. <laughs> All right. Are there different types of burglars? Yes, there are. Explain. I thought it was just, you know, when, you know I'm a burglar. <laughs> burglary is a crime of opportunity. Ah. You have, you have a youth problem. You have a gypsy problem. You have somebody who dedicates their life to doing burglaries. We'll start with the youth real quickly. Mm -hmm. A youth is somebody who may have a drug problem at some point in time. He needs money. He's stolen maybe from his parents, from his friends. The next one down the road is a neighbor. He will know your routine when you go to work, when you walk the dog, when you go into groceries, when your children go to school. He's there. Also, again, the gypsies, somebody who just drives through the neighborhood. They will pick the opportunity, as we'll discuss, as far as the house, mm -hmm. which looks the best to go after. Mm -hmm. And mm. somebody who's just in, out, they'll knock on your door, they'll even talk to you. Very frontal. You hold, have it, some hold, hold it one second. Sure. What about those uh, in Nassau County? We have a lot of gated communities. Right. Do you see a lot of that, the gypsy? I know you have other problems. No, that would be more of as far as either one, the youth, or you have somebody who's dedicated to doing burglaries. That's somebody that's okay. gone in there. He's maybe walked in the back. They don't have the proper fencing, lighting. They don't have the proper camera system. Mm -hmm. They have basically just that booth up in front. We don't want to give a false uh, presentation that that is the only thing that's going to stop somebody. They're not going to come to your front door <laughs> every time and, and say, hey, how's it going? Right, right. They're going to look at different opportunities, different angles to get in there. And as we know, gated communities, you right. know, people work. People work, right. And they have these big open houses, and there's a lot of items within there to choose from. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the goals that a homeowner should try and accomplish to protect the valuables? What can they do? Well, the three basic steps. You want to deny, deter, and detect. Deny basically is for somebody. Somebody coming into the house to begin with. Deny them access. Somehow. That's it. Just you know, make make that that house as safe as you possibly can. Um, deter wherever you can. It's it's something where if you're looking at different homes. Make your home the one that somebody doesn't want to hit. And if someone is actually going to get into your house, you want to know about it. Whether an alarm system, whether you have something as far as a camera system, you want to know about it. And if you, you have a, a big, expensive automobile, don't leave it outside. Put it in the driveway. I mean, put it in the garage, rather. This way somebody going by says, hey, look at that uh, Bentley out there. Let's, go, let's hit that house. Well, you want to make your house as far as viewable. In other words, you don't want to have somebody drive by and says, you know what, I see mail sticking out of the... Uh, Mailbox, the garbage cans are still out there. You've got your front lawn hasn't been cut. Mm. I'm knocking on the front door. There's no answer. Newspapers. Pretty good. Right. right. I see all that kind of stuff. That's interesting. So so there's there's a lot of steps that people can go. We just started to meet, discuss them right now. Let's talk about perimeter. Perimeter. Number one, uh, neighbors. Very important. Okay, they play a big role in it. They're the ones that are going to do that extra step if you're not home. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that alarm system, if you don't have something as, as far as a, a guard door or something like that, we're talking as far as a neighbor, they hear something, they see something, it doesn't feel good inside here. Mm -hmm. Please call 911. An officer will respond. We'll have the officers check out the house. They'll talk to you if you would like, and they'll check the house out. If it doesn't feel right here, more often than not, it's not right. Take the time, call up. That's our job. We will do it. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. Keep going. What are some of the other things? Access. On patrol, we are in cars, like the postcards. We're driving around. Access. You want to be able to view that house from the street. We want to be able to see what's going on. A lot of things that people do, they have shrubbery around it. We love shrubbery around our homes. It's beautiful. However, right. if it's blocking windows, blocking doorways, we're not going to see it. Your neighbor won't be able to see it. If something they hear as far as glass breaking, they're not going to know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Over 30%, uh, 37% of the burglaries just within uh, Nassau County are through the front door. Front door? Front door. And the reason being is this. Most people have that beautiful shrubbery on each side. Mm -hmm. Total stranger has a right to walk up to your front door and knock on it or ring the doorbell. Nobody finds that out of place. If you're standing at your front door and you turn around and you look back out to the street and you have shrubbery on each side, the only one that's going to view you is a neighbor across the street. Right. And if it doesn't look like their home, you're going to shoulder or push that door in. The big asset there, too, is a lot of people still enter through their front doors. Let's talk about that, because yeah. you mentioned that, and I was very impressed with that. People think, well, did you know, honey, did you close the door at night? Yeah, I did. What should you do to make that door as difficult to get through it as possible? I mean, look, someone has a chainsaw. Forget it. I mean, but... What, what do people do? Because you're saying Simple your shoulder items. will do it. Simple like, items. Like if what? you take a look at your deadbolt, first off, get a good lock, something that can't be picked, something that's going to work well. If you have only about an inch or a quarter an inch of, of wood holding behind that big door lock, nobody is going to you know, stop that. you got to put a plate behind it, or they also have plates for the base. In other words, it's just a hole drilled into the ground mm -hmm. where you're putting basically just a post that goes in there. Mm -hmm. It keeps the door from being pushed open or shoulder open. Right. It's convenient. And the top also. Top is good, especially if you have those nice, beautiful double doors. Some Correct. Of beautiful homes, they have beautiful double doors, but it makes a weak point, top and bottom, also latching it shut so it makes it sturdy. Right, right, because I know I have that in my, in my doors, you know, the top and the bottom as well. Right. Plus, I've got a whole bunch of bolts going across that's uh, inside as well. So, right. so, that, so that, that bolt going across should be how long? Minimum. The bolt should be at least three-quarter. If an inch or more would be better, inch or more. further into the wood, the better. Again, the plate on the outside with a couple screws on it. Don't make it just decorative. Make it sound. Right. They can have sound, solid pieces of material there, which also look decorative at the same time. Should you close your screen door at night, lock it from the inside? Absolutely, absolutely. Screen door pulls a big plus for us because of two reasons. One, it lets the door do its job. It doesn't warp, bow, or anything like that. Right. And you've got that extra ability to just, if you're going to shoulder in a door, push in a door, try to run a kick in a door, you've got that screen door in a way. And although it's a screen and you can tear the screen away and reach in and unlock it, it just adds one more obstacle. Right, 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 right. Well, we put glass on it uh, you know, many times because of the air conditioning and stuff. Right. So you got glass and the door gets to be pretty strong, so it becomes a big deal yes, to does. just try to get through that. Yes, it does. One thing we ask people, though, that do have glass doors, especially if they put the numbers behind that, is realize this. It looks nice, but at the evening hours when an officer is going by with either a spotlight from the car or his flashlight, Can't see it. it's almost like a reflection of somebody taking a flashbulb. Right. It's difficult to see that number. Put that number on the outside, preferably over the top of the mm -hmm. door, large numbers and visible to light. Not down at the base of the screen door as soon as the snow comes during the wintertime and covers up that door. Right. Even if it's not a burglary and you need medical attention, you want to see that number. Right, right. How important is lighting? Lighting is a big issue. If you're coming up to a house and that's lit up, that's not a house where I would want to go to and break into. You're visible. You're visible from the outside, and there's usually somebody watching just in a neighborhood area. Make it a deterrent. Sh uh, should you use lighting that's on all the time or motion detectors? They have different styles. They have the motion sensors now with the fluorescence, which is great, cost-effective, but have the lighting so at least it overlaps. Don't have any dark spots. Uh, I see. Okay. Um, what about um, rocks? Remember, you ma made a comment about that, and uh, it's an interesting thing. Explain that. Everybody has a beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. And again, if you have something which is an object, you're giving the burglar a tool to break a window. So they just pick it up and boom. If, you, if you're going to get a rock, get a big one they can't lift up. Make it nice <laughs> and decorative, but make it difficult. You know? <laughs> Shelter rock. <laughs> that would be the largest that, going. <laughs> that's, the, that's the largest going. Okay, let's talk about now the, um, the that, that was the perimeter. What about the exterior of the house? Exterior, again, uh, we have different type of burglars. Some go for the windows, some go to shoulder in the doors. Obviously, they go for the doors just because of the time delay as far as an alarm. Mm -hmm. uh, the alarm usually they're set for a minute or two or if you have an elderly person coming in or if you have groceries. Mm -hmm. 
it gives them that little bit of time to get up and out of the house. Burglars was only in the house less than two minutes. Well, you told me that once before, and I got to tell you, that really blew me away yeah. because, uh, you know, what do I know? I don't, uh, I don't hang out with burglars. So when you tell me that, you know, maximum two minutes, they're in and they're out, right. I mean, I, the assumption is they're going to run in the house fast, they're going to survey, and they're going to figure the, ba- the bedroom was upstairs, I'm going to run up to the bedroom or, exactly. uh, and, and look for certain things to grab. And you're saying that from the time it takes from that alarm, to go on and then send the message to the central station. Central station then sends it to the police. And then police have to dispatch. Uh, you're looking at what, four minutes, five minutes? Probably a little bit less than that. I'd say about three to four, which would be nice, optimal. But then again, you have to realize each alarm company is different as far as their response to right. 9-11. 9-11, although they're giving it immediately to the officer, the officer may have a distance from his last assignment or exactly. his last call. Exactly. Weather conditions, traffic conditions, lighting, etc. Right. Then actually locating that house. So what's going to happen is they're going to come in the house, they're going to run upstairs, they've got a bag of some kind, just throw anything they see and then get out. That's correct. They make it as accessible as they can. Most people have their jewelry. Everybody has a jewelry box. That's money right there. Hmm. And it's quick. It's easy, and it's out, small, carryable, concealable. And whether they're getting into a truck or taking a bicycle or just hopping in a, in a train right. or grabbing a taxi, which is waiting around the block, it's right. quick. And security cameras, are they of any value? Security cameras are a big value, especially you're not going to stop the burglar. Okay, of not. It may deter the burglar, but if he's caught on film, at least you have a little bit more than Evidence. just forensics to go by. Yes. The security camera should be outside or inside the house? If you can have both, if you can afford both, it's yeah. great. It would be a great deterrent. Huh. Just f- fascinating. Again, digital film, this. you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it's right. It's cost-effective. It's fascinating, everything that we're, we're discussing here. It's very, 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 very interesting what you're talking about. What can you do inside um, your house um, to make things more difficult? Inside the house... Again, the, the best deterrent is having that nice solid outside as far as inside, though, you want to have strong locks. Just start at the doors. Inside locks, which are workable. Nice uh, shifts and, and nice, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just uh, the abatement as far as holding the doors back. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, the hinging, solid. Mm-hmm. Windows, again, you can put a polycarbonate uh, substance on it, which works pretty well. It is a little costly. But it keeps the window from shattering. It's more almost like a uh, laminate would be on a, a windshield car. of a car. Right, 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 right. right. Okay. Uh, sensors, same thing, motion sensors, sliding glass doors, put the pins in, same thing with double-hung windows, put the pins on. These are all items which are really not expensive. Most local hardware stores carry this. Is there value in putting those on the sliding doors, putting those pieces of wood in the track so they can't slide the door You open. want to do more than that. You want to be able to get the top and bottom set. If it's just one side or the other, it's not enough because you can jiggle the bar, and we'll find a lot of times the bar has been kicked out because it's only the only piece that they have. The little latch system of, you know, it's comparable for closing the door, but you want to have it a little bit more secure. Pin it, have an alarm system on it, motion sensor or a glass sensor, right. it works best. So put in a pin on the top, and then you've got the your bottom. wood on the bottom. Well, the wood can... Wood can survive, pin but you, the, the pin pins are the best because they don't come out. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting because I, uh, I, I would look into doing that then. That, that's, that's fantastic. What about... Uh, there's a lot of nannies in this area here. Uh, any concern about that? I mean, you're hiring a nanny or... If you're going to hire a nanny, take the time to do a bit of a background check. Right. Now, it's not like somebody has a running track record behind them, but different agencies try to find out as much as they can about the nannies that they're hiring out. It affects their business, their name. So they'll take the time to do it. Don't rely solely on that. Talk to other neighbors, other people that have used this person before. Get a feel for what's going on. Mm-hmm. You should become proactive. That's really what, we, what I'm hearing today. Absolutely. Be proactive in, in, all, you know, in all manners here. Um, what about phone lines? I mean, would I mean, here I am. I'm giving ideas around television. I'm going to say, hey, it's a good idea. Why don't you try doing this to get it to somebody's house? I mean, the phone lines today, they're above ground. That's correct. I mean, can't someone just cut the line? And then, then you can't... There are two ways you can get around that. Okay, one, they have now what's called a wireless system. It's mm-hmm. a wireless backup. Mm-hmm. Works well. If your phone line is cut, you have the wireless backup. The burglar may not know that. You have a wireless system, and he would still attempt to break into your home. Right. That won't deter the burglar. 
but at least you have an alarm system still there. Hopefully the alarm system deters it. If you're having uh, vinyl siding put up on your home, yeah. speak to the guy, see if you can't have that line underneath the vinyl siding. It's a good way to it's hide not exposed. it. exposed. So you can't see it. Right. Yeah, that, that, that makes good sense. Um, what about having a panic button in the house? Is there value on that? Panic button is nice because scary if the wherever panic. you are, well, you got to look at it this way. If you're out by, let's say, the backyard with your kids, right. and your house doesn't have the alarm on it, but it's locked up, but you might have the back sliding door, somebody can enter through your front door or side windows, and you you're won't not going to know about it. You won't know it. Leave that alarm on, okay? If you have a panic button, you're outside, something doesn't feel right or something, you don't have to enter into your home. Hit that panic button. It's a good thing, especially if you have an elderly person in the house. It's it's a plus for them. You too. know what's going to drive people crazy, and I'm already projecting. How do you live your life like this? I mean, you get up in the morning, you know, I I, I put my wallet, I get this, I get that. Oh, and I get my panic button, and I put my. <laughs> I mean, you, you get a little nuts after a while. You become paranoid. This is what you do. You take the proactive approach. Go ahead. You set these things in place. It makes you feel more comfortable. You live in Nassau County. Nassau County's got a great, great reputation as far as the police officers, as far as keeping down burglary. Mm -hmm. That should be at least some solace as far as <laughs> public, right? Um, if you're set for something, you feel confident about it. It's like going into anything. You take an exam. If you're not prepared, right. it's not a good feeling. Right. You know, I remember years ago, uh, I had an, uh, an office uh, in, uh, in Flushing. And um, I was very good friends with uh, officers and their patients of mine from 109, I think it was. And uh, I remember being able to, they told me, you know, one good thing, why don't you take uh, an, uh, an officer's hat and just leave it on the hook, you know, inside the waiting room. So, so one, you know, I did that. And uh, I remember someone came in, and it was, and they happened to have been an officer who was with me. And uh, a, cr a crazy guy came in, and, and uh, I was afraid I was going to be held up. And he came in, took a look at the hat on the hook, and went just walked right out. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it, interesting. Again, deterrent. It's the perception. Perception of animals, too. You may not own a dog. Mm. Nothing against cats. But if you have a large dog or a sound of one, it is a deterrent. If you don't have a large animal or something that's going to make some noise and pull somebody's attention to you, mm -hmm. again, dog bowl, leash, have something out there, a chew toy. We're not talking about brand new items. Have somebody's old yeah, chew toy. Yeah, Do you yeah, mind? Yeah. Hold on. I'm going on vacation for a week right, or two. Right. I'm going to be out of the house. Right. There's something that, that's that's worked over the years. There's an officer by the name of uh, Detective Burke, Ronnie Burke, who I think from day one has proclaimed this, and it does work, and especially when you talk to some of the guys that we've had in the station house, and you ask them, how come you didn't go to this house or that house? You know, It's, it's kind of interesting. Interesting. Uh, maybe I can just ask your neighbor, can I borrow your Mastiff for uh, two weeks and let the dog just kind of roam the property? It's kind of bold, but... <laughs> That's a really good idea. I like that. It's a good idea to put out something that shows you got a dog. Let's go into uh, e things that, um, that um, uh, little tips that people should be aware of, like with uh, keys. I wrote a couple down here. Yeah. It's, it's something that's uh, Let's important. discuss that. This is something that we all kind of take for granted, okay? Keys. If you're going to hide a key, don't hide it around the door, okay? If you're leaving it for your son, we, we know about uh, one-third of our, our kids coming home are coming home in single-parent families. So they're getting home that two to four hours right after uh, their school and mm -hmm. before we're home. Mm -hmm. um, there's something that don't make it so accessible and so easily seen from somebody. Have a spot or a different location. Mm -hmm. uh, also realize this. Don't have it right by the door. A lot of times somebody will have little hooks right by the door. You break a window. It's easy. You're reaching in, you're taking the key itself. Right, you know? right, right, right. Notes, same thing. If you're going to leave a note for your son or daughter or something like that, don't tape it up or put it on a counter where it's visible to somebody looking in the window. A burglar comes, he's looking into which window I'm going to break in, he's checking all the windows. Julie, I'll be home at 6 o'clock. Well, it's 5.30. Hey, all right, I got some get time going. In. Okay? Right. Same thing with calendars. You have a calendar hanging up. We all have that calendar on the oh, side of the refrigerator, right, right, okay? Right, right, right. Well, you have somebody coming in to do work in your house or somebody that normally isn't in your house. Mm. They're looking right, well, you're on vacation this week. It's all highlighted because you're going on vacation. It's notable dates. You're giving somebody information about yourself. Same thing as if you have the neighbor checking your house while you're on vacation. You've got the mail all piled up. If that can be seen from the outside window, that's telling the burglar, hey, you know what? They're away this week. That mail. Garage door openers, same thing. Every 33 seconds, a car is stolen in the nation. Every how many seconds? 33 seconds. Okay. If you have your garage door opener in that car, 
You usually have your insurance card in the car. You just give them an address now to go to. Mm, unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. Delivery, same thing. Cleaners. Uh, we have uh, a village within our neighborhood that uh, the cleaners do a nice job, but they live. Uh, they leave the uh, cleaning supplies right, right on the front right, door. Yeah, right on the front door. That's an advertisement. That tells you. Uh, we'll get back to one second mail. Sure. What about mail? Mail's a big plus uh, as far as for a burglar. Let's face it. If the mail's sitting there at the end of the day, you kind of know somebody's not home because we're so interested on getting everything. Mail, have a large mailbox. If you can't have a door slot, have a mailbox, mm. which is large. That Big enough to handle can be closed. You have the newspaper, the advertisement, the magazine. They're not going to be able to tell from the street unless they physically go up there and open it. What about the slots of a mail slot? Is it better to have a mail slot in that purpose, or it's not a good idea to have a mail, mail slot, slot for other reasons? Mail slot is a bad thing, but if you have a screen door or something, now you've left your screen door open so that the post office, the postman can get to it. So it's Better to have the other way then. Yeah. Or just forget it altogether and have a P.O. box. <laughs> that would work, but you're trying to still stay with convenience. Right, you know, right, as that's much problem. as possible. So, so okay, so uh, what, what about valuables? Valuables, don't leave them right in that jewelry box. If you have valuables that you wear maybe three or four times the course of the year, or you have something to wear at uh, the holidays, mm -hmm. put it away. Put it in a different location, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember where that location is, right. not that you forget where it is. Right. But don't have the bulk of everything you have sitting right there. If you have a safe... Put it in the safe. Lock the safe. But make sure the safe is bolted to the ground. If it's bolted to the wall, mm. make sure it's in. They have floor safes going into the floor. Make it inaccessible where somebody's not going to pry that out. Yeah, if it's, if it's in the floor. It's Spend the money to get a good safe. If yeah, you it makes it makes great if sense not, what you're saying. You have a safe deposit box. Use it. Um, neighbors, we mentioned this earlier. Um, you, you know, there comes a time you got to trust somebody. I mean, it would be a horrible thing if you think your neighbor is going to. Is going to be the burglarizing your house. Right. It's not impossible. Again, that, that gut have a kid. Feeling. What? That, that it's gut a gut feeling. Gut so feeling. when you go on vacation, let your neighbors know you're going on vacation. Right. Taking my mail. Don't just let just the neighbors know, but have it where they're checking at least that they make sure that the water, I mean the uh, the lawn is watered. Mm -hmm. You know that everything looks like lived you're in. living in it. Lived right? in. Right. Um, if you're going away over time, call the local precinct. We will take a report. We call a vacant premise report. Okay. We will check on your home. See, that, that was an, uh, I was going to ask that question. So if we go away on a long trip, right. you should, I mean, what, what's called a long trip? A, a day, two, or three? You're going five, down to Florida. What? Right. Okay, you're going away something. You're, this is not a weekend trip, you know. I mean, you can call if you're going away for a day or two or three. That's fine. But usually people call up if they're going on an extended vacation. Really? People do call you. Because now you have something where, you know what, you really don't have that chance. And not everybody has a neighbor that they can trust or a right. relative that can get over there. What do you do? We're, we've got about a minute left. What do you do if uh, you call up um, the police, that you call off the precinct and that you're going to be um, away on vacation um, and uh, you live in a gated community? That's fine. Do the same thing. Police we will still come in and check it out. We go into every gated community. Oh, okay. That we have. I didn't realize gated that. Gated community, we have free reign on it. Okay. And a minute left. Give me some tips. Tips. Like if you were watching right now, to wrap up everything, give me some tips. If you're going to be the one in the neighborhood that's going to be burglarized, where the burglar has picked your house, okay, be the one to pick it out before that happens. When you go home Ooh. tonight, take a look at your home. What would make it accessible? Is it accessible because of the garage next door from your neighbor's house? Is it a dark spot? Is it shrubs, hedgery? Mm -hmm. Take a look at what you have. Try to work within your budget what you can do. Right. Try to do just a little bit more. Make believe you're a burglar. you got to think like a burglar to beat the burglar. Right. Okay. That makes great sense. It's terrific. Uh, i got to tell you, I learned a lot from you before. I learned a lot from you again today. I think you're, 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 you're bright, you're intelligent, you're smart, and you're, you're very, um, very good. You're, you're eloquent in expressing okay. everything. So uh, you're, you're terrific. You're, you're, you're just a wealth of information. Would you come back again on other areas for us to discuss? If the department allows me, yes. Oh, I'm sure they will. How could they not? You're so terrific. You know, we're out of time. Police Officer Peter Chuchel, I want to thank very you much. very much. It was great. And... Uh, We'll see what we can do about speaking to the inspector about getting you back here again. Okay, appreciate All right. it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. You're a credit to the 6th Precinct in Nassau County. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I hope you got a lot out of it. And right now, when the show is over, go outside your house, look around, and see. Make believe you're the burglar. So this way, you don't have to suffer any problems. You don't want him coming to the house looking around afterwards saying, oh, it's a shame you didn't watch the show. He did watch the show. Okay, Dr. Passes, saying whatever you do, do it with passion, but also do this one with a lot of intelligence. Protect yourself and your family. See you again next time.